every day, normally, around my house, I spend a lot of time doing ministry work. You know, posting devotionals and teachings and things that other people may not have had the opportunity to learn in their Christian experience and may not have the tools or the knowledge to find those materials. So because I know what it's like to not have all the money in the world to spend on Christian material, I like to go out and find those things that really are beneficial to people wanting to learn about God and try to provide them to other people that might want to learn without having to pay for it. When I was growing up, Firefighters for Christ was one of those types of ministries. Freely you receive, freely give. That was their motto, basically, and they've pretty much done that all their ministry life. And I went around the country at different times setting up Christian libraries, maybe only two or three, but the point is, is that one of them is still in service today and has become a huge book library. And not so much on the cassettes anymore, <laughs> but still there. And uh, that heart of mine has always been to always provide the tools for other people to learn from so that they can discover for themselves who Jesus is, so that they can uncover by themselves what the facts are regarding the Son of God, the Son of Man. Because you see, I know what it's like to be deceived, and I also know what it's like to be taught. I know what good teachings are out there, and I know what bad teachings there are. I know when there's a certain amount of like cultic activity, and a certain amount of lying and deceiving going on. Because I've pretty much been trained that way, and actually I was pretty cynical when I came to Christianity, because I argued with God. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Didn't win too many of those arguments, but... By golly, I argued anyways. I used to get out in the parking lot and argue about it, you know, because until I had the answer, I wasn't satisfied. And I would not do anything until I knew for sure that it was true. And my search for truth, unfortunately, took me through a lot of experiences that, you know, Solomon did the same thing, and I don't recommend that way to go. So in order to spare other people that kind of experience, meaning that the learning... A fact doesn't mean that it becomes wisdom until you actually put your life experience into it and you know what it means because you've lived it. Then I don't really recommend going the Solomon route of wisdom. You know, I've been there, done that, and it's no fun. Trust me, you get scars on your heart and soul. You know, it's going to be with you for a long time. But providing the tools and the opportunities to learn now that I love because I enjoy so much to watch other people discover Jesus and to share him with me in a way that I might not have thought of, that might be even more personal than I know him as. And that's what I really enjoyed about doing the ministry now in Vidigo. And part of that ministry that I've been doing has been sharing other people's materials. And unfortunately, I've been getting exhausted. <sighs> There's a lot of good stuff out there. <laughs> so. I've had to change the format of what I'm doing in my life and change the format of video so that I stop posting right around noon, you know, and start recording some new videos, you know, because a lot of the videos that you see or have seen in the past under different topics all came from a very intense time when I was living in another apartment complex and every morning I'd get up early in the morning and I'd record, oh, I don't know, maybe eight or nine videos in a row. You know, just seven of them for sure, maybe a few more. And really loved it, you know, and then I'd go on about my day. And uh, they're powerful. They are they were ministering to me, and Jesus was with me. And, you know, watching the Spirit of God now change the style of ministry to more of a growing up into, you know, the men and women of God that I've seen change from the videos I now see that there's more to what I need to do in helping provide the environment for people to grow in. Because you see, if I left this little seedling out, you know, this little, uh, I think it's a snap pea. If I left this snap pea out in the cold, it would die very quickly. But you see, I have a responsibility as a man of God, older in the Lord, 
to not leave the snap peas out, not if I want them to grow. I'm supposed to provide the environment, the area of influence, the things that would be beneficial to them, like light. I'm supposed to give them the best light possible so that they can grow under the ideal circumstances and situation, so that they can develop as they choose to according to how God develops them and uses them. And then let them go to what they would accomplish and do in their life, even as you in your life are accomplishing what God wants to do in your life. The greatest gift that we can give to anyone isn't to build a mega church. The greatest gift we can is to empty the churches out of all the people that have been there longer than a year or two. Because you see, that's the way I was taught. A pastor by the name of Romaine told us that if you've been at Calvary for two years, you know, it's about time you got out and did something. Because frankly, you've already received some of the best quality teaching that you could possibly receive, and it's time for you to go out and do something with what you've learned. And I think that's the failure right now of mega ministries is that they think they can keep the ministry stuff in-house rather than send everybody to the outhouse and get something done. Because if they would do that, then I believe that they would accomplish so much more than they ever dreamed of. That they have not seen, nor has their eye, nor has their ear heard, the things which God has prepared for them if they would just get out of the mega ministry and go out into the world. Because you see, Christianity in America really is the most overburdened, overworked, overdone, quite frankly, spoiled, fat little brats I've ever seen. <laughs> we all like to sit back in the sunshine and rest in the shade, you know, of a great tree, you know, and watch the waves go by, you know, and just kind of like say, wow, grace is great. Let's just kick back and kick back and wait until the rapture comes. And that's really not what God's all about. You, know? you may get there, but you might not like how you wind up there. Because you see, some people probably are going to go into a really challenging time called the Great Tribulation. God knows I wouldn't want you to be there. But giving you the opportunity and letting you go into where God leads you is what every minister of God should be about. They should be giving you the best quality education that they can based upon their experience, knowledge, and wisdom they've accumulated from their personal relationship with God. As they do that, then they will make disciples of all nations. Not just disciples of the local congregation, but disciples of all nations by sending people out. You see, missionary work was never meant to be kind of like a part-time thing. You know, yeah, you know, I think I'll do it. You know, this weekend we'll take a vacation. You know, and we'll, we'll go out and you know throw a few tracks around. You know, <laughs> uh huh. Or you know, I think we'll maybe maybe we'll pray about you know taking one of our vacation weeks out of our job and spending it for the Lord. Maybe. Uh huh. Or are you willing to sell all that you have, get out of your house? get out of your comfort zone and go out and be a missionary somewhere in another country? Are you willing to go where God will lead you? Are you willing to do what costs you every effort? Do you see David, David said, or Abraham said that, hey look, I want to buy this uh, cave for my wife. You know, she's dead, but you know, I want to buy it. And he says, no, you know, I'll give it to you because you're such a great man, you know, and I want to give it to you. He says, no, I won't accept freely what doesn't require of me some cost. It must cost me something in order for it to be of value to me. And that's a good question about your salvation, you know, is that if you're a Christian, if you've learned who Jesus is, if you know that you walk with him and talk with him, how valuable is that to you? Are you willing to do like he said to do? Or are you just kind of like, you know, as long as the sun's shining and the stars are in the sky, you know, and the wind's blowing and everything's shiny and bright, I'm all right. You know, kind of a Hollywood Christian. Have you ever heard that term before? That's what most people nowadays are, Hollywood Christian. You see, they like being on the red carpet. They like being in the limelight and the showboat. They like to have the spotlight on themselves. They like to pose their Christianity. They like to impose their religion. They like to doctrinate and indoctrinate everyone around them with just how wonderful they are until they go through the next relationship and the next divorce. Oh, they're a star, Christian star, you know, Hollywood Christian. 
That's kind of what, sadly, most people really want. Now, I don't deny there's a part of me that would love to be a Hollywood Christian. Yep, let me get my best face forward, you know, let me uh, make sure you got the right side to, you know, get a good snapshot, and let me do my poses, and let me make my choices, and let me look my best so that all the rest will follow me as I follow him because I'm giving it all to God, right? You know, I'm dedicating it to Tebow. But what you do when you're not a Hollywood Christian is really the bottom line of what kind of person God is making you to be. And that's why in my life with Vidivo, I've had to stop what I was doing recording. I had to change things that were going on. I had to rearrange the environment so I could adapt to some of the things that I see happening to a lot of my co-Christians and friends, as well as people I care about, because they're going off the deep end into the prosperity, off the deep end into politics, off the deep end, well, they're just going off, let's just be real. They're not involved in really caring about the primacy or the efficacy or the most important thing there is, Jesus said to do, which was the gospel. You know, Keith Green once said, I pledge my head to heaven for the gospel's sake. I pledge my wife to heaven for the gospel's sake. I pledge my children to heaven for the gospel's sake. You see, he wasn't willing to compromise and he lived his life outward all the way to the moment he died, living it, proving it, doing it. And that's the choice you have. Maybe you're like me and you need to change the environment, you know, and rearrange some things in your life. Maybe it's time you stopped doing what you're doing on Facebook or Twitter and rearrange some of the things that's going on in your heart. Maybe you need to spend more time not in, quote unquote, the mega ministry or the personal Hollywood style life that you're choosing to do because it's all about you. Maybe. You need to remember to go out and water somebody. You know, kind of like this, this uh, snap pee. Maybe you need to go out and kind of help someone change their environment of where they're living at. Maybe you need to be the gardener in someone else's soul, participating maybe in a little fertilizing of them at some point in time to make them whole. Maybe, just maybe, God wants you to grow up and no longer be a child, but he wants to make you a gardener so that you'll not only plant, but you'll also water, that you'll also fertilize, that you'll be that type of person that God can use to grow up men and women of God that would go out and accomplish their purposes. Because you see, it's easy to just shine it on and be the spotlight like a Hollywood Christian. But the fact of gardeners is that you may not have realized this, but uh, a lot of what a gardener does is he works in the dirt. And I don't know how to tell you this, but if you look at my clothes and you look at my hands, you got to get dirty when you work in the dirt. It doesn't operate any other way. And that's what happens when you get involved in people's lives when it's no longer being distant from everybody else's sin. Go God, thank God I'm not like them. Huh, you know, one of them Muslims or one of them Christians or one of them Jews or one of them you know who's, because I don't know who's, because we're all the same. You scratch the surface of me and I itch. You look underneath my skin and I have blood. You look inside my body and I have bones. You look in my heart and I have feelings. You look inside of any human being and they have a soul. But the one thing that makes Christians different is being born again means that you're born of the Spirit of God. And He comes and resides in your heart. And He is there to change you into the image of God. To make you what God wants you to be, like Him, a father. A father to many nations, like Abraham. A father to many peoples, like Abraham was. He wants you to be a garden, going out and beginning to plant the seeds and to cause them to grow, to water them and take care of them, to provide the environment 
to nourish them and help them to grow so they may bear fruit even as your life as you begin to help those who can't help themselves will likewise bear fruit I don't know maybe it's just me maybe I'm just the one that's you know kind of like being a gardener because I'll admit ever since I got saved 35 years ago I've always loved gardening I like growing plants with blossoms I like growing plants with fruit matter of fact I think I like growing plants with nuts but I've never tried that yet love to grow some trees one of these days you know can't afford it now but you know I've been wanting and my wife and I can't afford it but I've been wanting those little like you know well maybe they're taller than that but I've been wanting to get some of those uh, dwarf trees you know maybe if I find one dying somewhere somebody will give it to me but get a dwarf tree a dwarf orange tree or a dwarf fig tree <laughs> no I'm kidding or a dwarf uh, olive tree or you know just dwarf trees so that I could grow a bunch of them and see if I could get them to grow it would be fun you know because you see part of being a gardener is getting me ready for the millennium because Jesus is coming and I'm retiring I'm sorry you know a lot of you people you know they think that you're going to be kings and priests and God bless you you know you can go out and do what you want to do me huh. in the millennium when Jesus comes sets up his kingdom hey I'm heading for the hills I got a little acreage that's calling my name and says hey you're gonna camp out you're gonna rest you're going to enter into relaxation because you know what all this consternation and all this frustration you know that's all for other people me I'm going to relax and enjoy a thousand years of peace just watching my garden grow and maybe if you come along you'll check out my garden and see what it looks like in the millennium in the meantime you just kind of have to look around and see maybe the people that I've talked to Maybe the people I've walked with, maybe the people that I've shared with or cared about or that I've prayed for without their ever knowing. Because you see, every person that I ever have touched their lives, if they've seen a video, I prayed a blessing upon them that God would take them and wring their necks. Yeah, really. Seriously. Well, maybe not wring their necks, but, you know, grab them by the scruff of the neck and hang on to them for dear life because that little Christian, whoever it is, is probably going to try to run like hell to get away from him. And I'd rather God had a hang on on to him. You know, kind of like little kids running away, trying to get away. You grab them by the scruff of the neck and you hang on to them tight. That's kind of what I want for every single person that watches a video. God hangs on to them. Oh, sure, they may think they're in control. <laughs> but the one thing I've learned about being a gardener, this little snap pea right now has no idea that I'm watering it, that I'm holding it, that I'm taking care of it. That's how God wants you to be with someone else in your life.